Hey, welcome back to finishing up the three statement dynamic financial model uh, where we last left off is we, of course, have our completed income statement. We've got our nearly completed balance sheet. The only thing we're missing is that modeled cash balance going forward. And the reason we don't have that yet is because we haven't built the cash flow statement. So that's what this video is. And let's just get started. If you recall in the income statement and the balance sheet, we have these nice tables where we're organizing our measures. We pull all of the information we need to create the cash flow statement from work we've already done. And for that reason, we don't have a data table and I need a place to store all the cash flow statement measures. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a measures storage table. I'm going to call it cash flow statement. We'll load that up. And then I'm going to do a simple copy paste on the income statement visual. Paste that right here. We are going to get rid of every measure in here except net income. Why? Because we start with net income at the start of the cash flow statement. And the next thing we do is we add back depreciation. So let's create our first measure here. And the reason we need a different depreciation measure than the one we're using for our depreciation expense over here in the in income statement is that it's going to be opposite signage. It's negative signage because it's an expense over here in the income statement. In the cash flow statement, we are adding that back because it's a non-cash expense. So all I'm going to do here is throw a negative in there and use that work we already did with the depreciation measure, drag that in and let's make sure it looks good. So, yep, we've got that 100, 200 going out and we'll do all the formatting at the end. So let's move on to our next one. I'm going to build out these change in accounts receivable, change in accounts payable measures first, and then we're going to circle back to them and apply the actual logic. So I'll fast forward a bit through this section. And the combination of the change in accounts payable, the adding back of depreciation, the changes in accounts receivable, and the change in deferred revenue, that's our total operating activity cash flow. So call this subtotal operating cash flows, and that's going to be your depreciation for the cash flow statement plus your change in AP, change in AR, change in deferred rev. Add all those into our matrix visual. A little trick here. If you right click delete the blank column we had in our measures holder table, you see that the icon here changes to a little calculator because there's only measures housed in this table. So do a little organization here. Now the next one we need is we're now in our investing cash flows section of the cash flow statement. So what we need is our capex or capital expenditures and that's going to be some of the value from our fixed assets schedule that we got very familiar with in the balance sheet section where that's actually it we just need that sum don't we drag that in great yeah and there's the thousand for our new chairlift in 2024 I think 200, we bought the kegerator and then 800, that was the new waxing machine because we like to ski fast and we made sure to buy the kegerator before we bought the waxing machine. Um, okay, that is the total of our investing cash flows, right? That's us shoving cash into our business to grow our biz business. So investing cash flows, simply it's going to be the CapEx there. And before we move on, let's make sure we have our everything's everything's cash flow signage in the cash flow statement, right? So CapEx, that's cash out the door. I need to throw a negative there. 
we have negative investing cash flows. We are investing in our business, buying those fixed assets. So the last section, of course, is the financing cash flows section. And let's do a new measure here. This is going to be new borrowing, and that's going to be calculate some of the value from the assumptions table where the assumption is equal to new borrowing. Close that up. Copy paste that measure so we can keep moving quickly. And this one's going to be repayments, right? Debt repayments. We have a schedule for that. It's coming from our assumptions register. If you have any questions at all about the assumptions register or the fixed asset schedule, make, make sure you're not just coming into this video cold. Check out the balance sheet and income statement modeling videos. They're linked below. Um, everything's linked together. So this is going to be repayment. And let's do our cash flow signage. So net new borrowing, that's cash coming in. We took a loan from a bank or whatever. Um, so that's positive cash flow signage. Repayments, that's cash flow going out. We are taking cash we have in our business and we're paying down our debt. So we need to throw a negative on that. And let's make our subtotal here, financing cash flows. And that's going to be your new borrowing plus your repayments. It's that simple. Add that guy in. And then we've got our three sections, operating cash flow, which is cash flows from kind of the underlying operations of your business, our investing cash flow from reinvesting in the business into the future, and then our financing cash flows from things like uh, getting new debt and paying back debt. You add those changes together, you get something called the net cash flow. So that's operating cash flows plus investing cash flows plus financing cash flows. And ultimately, the change in net cash flow, this net cash flow line is what's going to come back up and feed our balance sheet up here. We have not done the syntax for the change in accounts payable, accounts receivable, or deferred revenue. So let's go and do those now. And let's also take the chance here to apply a simple filter where we ignore 2023. Why do we ignore 2023? Because it's not actually modeled. Those are actuals, right? We, we already know what the cash balance was at the end of 2023. We don't know 2024 forward. So I'm going to just remove that from my visual here and let's adjust the change in accounts payable. So how would we know how our accounts payable balances changes year to year? It looks like it's growing here. The way that we would do that is we'd use some DAX time intelligence. So let's create a variable here. It's called previous year. And let's do calculate our accounts payable. We've done most of the hard work here when we made the balance sheet. And let's do a date add function on the date column. And the interval is going to be negative one. And the type of interval is a year. So that date add is shifting everything back a year because we want that previous year. Close it up. And then let's, very logical. It would be the accounts payable in year minus whatever it was for last year. That should be your change. And let's see if it actually is. Uh, we don't have decimals, so that's why we're not seeing anything. Let's change, let's add two decimals here. And you can see our accounts payable growing ever so slightly year over year. Now let's do the exact same sort of syntax for our uh, deferred revenue in our accounts receivable. The same exact approach with the change in accounts receivable, but there's one difference here. It's very important. We want the cash flow signage. And as you can see, our accounts receivable is growing through the years. And what that means is it's actually a bad thing for us, right? It's a, it's a cash outflow. There's a higher amount every year of people that owe us money that we're not collecting cash on. So that's why I'm throwing the negative in here. And that will reflect the fact that the accounts receivable balance is growing. I'm just gonna do the decimals here so we can make sure everything's working. And yeah, it's it's only ever so slightly growing, kind of $1 a year. Um, 
let me do some final formatting and that pretty much concludes the actual cash flow statement and then we're going to uh, update our cash balance up here in the balance sheet okay formatting all cleaned up here i threw the measures into a organization folder just like i did with the balance sheet and the income statement and let's look at the dax syntax for making sure our cash balance modeled going forward makes sense and as you can see our balance sheet finally balances going forward through the years so that that's kind of the final check of our completeness of our three statement financial model in power bi let's walk through this rather than typing it all out so very similar approach to what we've been doing this entire time maybe the past 10 measures have had something similar to this 10 complex measures there's the starting point right we know what the cash balance is at the end of 2023 that makes sense and then i'm creating a virtual helper table here all it is is a uh, condensed version of our date table where it's only pulling the years it doesn't have a record for every single day going through the year um, and i'm also saying i only want the years that are greater than 2023 because I already know what my cash balance is in 2023. We don't need we don't need to add anything to it or change it. Then the cash flow running total using the net cash flow we calculated down here in the cash flow statement. This sum x of course evaluates for every record in that condensed date table we created as a helper table. Um, this is the exact same syntax we've used for every other running total for things like capex, accumulated depreciation. We did it all in the balance sheet. So Check that video out if you have any questions as to how we're calculating a running total. And what you are left with for your cash balance, of course, is your starting point at year end of 2023 plus that running total. So we had net cash flow of 288 in 2024. So balance sheet end of 2024, cash amount is going to be 3288. I really hope you guys got a lot of value learning how to do a dynamic three financial statement model all in power bi there's a lot of great dax in these three videos if you haven't watched the full multi-part series all the videos are in the link down below they'll probably pop up here at the end screen too so again this is dakota with tarmi and be sure to leave a comment uh, on what you want to see next and i'm going to continue to build all this out thanks <laughs>